So, uh, well, look, we'll, we'll get started into it. Um, <clears throat> so I'll, I'll kick it off. Um, <clears throat> and I was going to do a picture for this, but anyway, it's a bit all too hard. So um, are you sort of ready to go with some sort of email stuff, and email? And I'll, I can ask you some questions. Pictures. Right? You want me to, I could do the whiteboard thing and draw pictures. Yeah, you could. All right. No, what are the questions that I need to I'm ask you? I'm not going to do that. What are the questions I need to you ask could, you? You could ask me. Um, Mark, method. What so you've got what an is, acronym. What is email deliverability? Why is it important? Well, I know why it's important. What, okay, David, tell me what's email deliverability just mean to you, and why is it important? <laughs> right. Well, well, for me, it's it's super important because we basically seventy percent of our hmm. income for our business comes from email marketing. Yeah. You know, I mean, our business funnel is basically generate leads off Facebook. Mm warm them up through content and building relationship and, you know, build um, uh, trust and what is it? The three, the three things, what is it? Um, friendly, no, no, what are the three things? The like, know, and trust, right? So oh, okay. like, know, and trust through our email marketing. Yep. And then, then we do one of two things. We do, we uh, have offers that we send out via email. And we also invite people to book a calls for those um, high ticket sales. So we've got, we're selling stuff uh, on our store that are low ticket items that we use just to sort of tick over. And we've got campaigns to run all that. And then we've got high ticket items that we use Dog. email campaigns. Yep. To book yep. a call. So, so for us, if we didn't have email, if we didn't have Facebook, if we didn't have email, we wouldn't have a business. Yep. Um, so email deliverability is super important to us. And that's why I've spent a stack load of time with you getting that sorted out around engagement and making sure that, uh, you know, we're doing. Yeah. You've been like a best case um, customer in that regard. You like yeah. take it on board and go, okay, I'll do it. And, and that's, yeah. that's, that's like, um, it makes a huge difference to, uh, you know, how, how things go with anyone with this stuff. Hold on two seconds. I just got to, I just got to go. Um, there's a setting I can do that makes my screen turn into a, a light. Hold on. It's got light. <laughs> You know, it's it's got a dark, so kind of dark because I turn. If I have the light above me, it oh no, you look fantastic. It glows off my head. Oh, no, white screen. Concerned about it glowing off your head. All right, well, we'll get. Boom, into there screen. we go. Yeah. Now I'm a bit. Oh now, wow. Yeah. There you go. Fantastic. I've just got white staring at me, so that's really yep. good. Cool. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. So, anyway, like, so um, so talk yeah, about so, email delivery. So like, like I mean, you say do this, and I just do it. But yep. but you know, for you, it's you know, I mean. Talk that, about I mean, some of the stuff, the acronyms and things. Yeah, like, so that look, so yeah. so so your answer answered it from the business perspective of like, you know, why 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 email deliver? But I guess what I'm getting at is like, email deliverability is is in my perspective is reaching the inbox, yeah. right? And, and yeah. so you, email is not a guaranteed service. Email is one of those things where it's built on the internet. It's been around since the early days of the internet. It, it was never secure originally. It was, um, you know, we we I, I remember sending emails to people pretending to be, you know, president at whitehouse.gov. And, uh, you know, nobody, you couldn't tell the difference between that and the real email from the president of the White House back in the early days, um, because there was no authentication, there was no, um, you know, there was no, there was no spam protection, anything like that. So in the early days, and it, it's, yeah. it's built up over the, you know, decades, based on that. And it's, it's an open standard, and it's controlled by whoever is, receiving the emails and storing them, yeah. but also who's sending them. So, you know, you, you only have a limited um, control over uh, whether your email, when you send it, yeah. everyone expects their email to get to the person they send it to, but yeah. it's, it's not the, the the mail service or the, I was going to say the US postal service, you know, yeah. it's not that, <laughs> I was going to say, it's not the Australian person, all of the, these postal services at the moment are struggling with, with all the COVID problems and lockdowns yeah. and political issues, but it's not, it's not a guaranteed service. So yeah. um, you send an email, the email goes, the email server at your end goes, Hey, yeah. Google, Mark's trying to send an email to David. Is yeah. that okay? Well, will you accept it? And they might go, no, yes. We don't know who David is. His mailbox is full. They might not answer at all. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things that can happen there. Yeah. They might even say, yes, take it and then just throw it out or put it into David's folder called a spam folder or his um, secondary, you know, secondary folder called his, um, what do they call them on Google? Here I am, the mail delivery. Yeah. Sorry. Promotions. Sure. That's it. Yeah. yeah. I always forget yeah. that word. <laughs> so um, I don't use Google. So that's my defense. Yeah. Um, so really, it's all about, you know, from a business perspective, 
A, reaching the inbox and, and B, making sure that the person that you're sending it to notices your email and, and wants to open it, wants to receive it, and is happy to do so. Um, so, you know, we get most of the email on the internet spam. And so, you know, all the providers have this statistic. problem <laughs> of like all this email coming in, they're going, oh, throw that out, throw that out, throw that out. Okay, that will accept. Um, it's getting to the point where, you know, people like Apple are creating new systems to try and just make it almost impossible for people to not only send spam, but also to market, you know, and, and be able to do things like um, track whether an email has has been delivered or not and whether it's been opened or not yeah and and there's you know there's two sides to that argument there's the person you know that just joe blogs who receives an email Mm -hmm. like well i don't want to tell people whether i've opened or read you know i want to control that that's privacy issue but on a marketing and business perspective that's useful information because then you know that they're actually interested in your your email and and you know they've clicked on something that tells you because you know they click a link and you know that they've clicked that link that's that's you know useful information for you so that you can decide whether you're going to keep sending email to that person yeah, yeah. and and if they're not opening your emails and not clicking on anything then you know you don't want yeah. to be sending to them because it's a waste of time and you become a spammer yeah absolutely so i mean we've got kind of best practices when we do our lead magnet delivery we've got an email going out with a link to the lead magnet which is probably not best practice we should really have a link going to a website where they can download it rather than a link to the download but anyway we've all depends. sorted out yeah it depends but, but the second email that we send out to them is a clean text email that basically doesn't have any links that, that just checks 30 minutes later to say, hey, you requested a download. Did you get it? Now, of course, if they click on the first email, it'll basically pull them out of that sequence so yep. they don't get that second email. But if they, if, if, the, if our email system or Infusionsoft detects that, they've, that they haven't clicked on Eep. that email or opened it, keep sorry yep. yeah thank you uh then we'll send them the email to say hey you know have you done it and it's interesting because our support ticketing system will pick that up we'll get we'll get messages from people that respond to the email saying hey i didn't get it and it's just good good etiquette to just follow up to make sure that they got it just yeah. in case that first email got blocked by and usually the main content main you know culprits and blocking emails are hotmail and gmail and well in here in australia big pond and notorious for just yeah um you know just um, unsubscribing people from our, yeah, yeah, you know, like yeah, just, big point. Big point. Are like, oh, we're only going to let ten emails an hour get delivered from this domain. You know, so it's like it comes back yeah. as a uh, hard bounced. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. So, so, so anyway, yeah, so, so, so yeah, sorry. No, yeah. that's right. I was just going to say that you're right. Uh, Microsoft are a lot harder on marketing type emails and the yeah. delivery of them because that their business model isn't around marketing. Their business models come from business and enterprise. Yeah. So people pay for their mail services, um, although Hotmail is free service, but you know, that they've got their 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 way of thinking is that the the person who's using their email service isn't the cus- isn't the um, their free email user isn't the customer. Yeah. Uh, you know, they are wanting to make sure that. Let me explain that differently. I think I explained that badly. the the old The old adage that if um you know if if you're not paying for a service, then you know how are you paying for that you know service? Yeah. So you are paying, you paying for it one way or another, and that's yeah. usually through data collection and tracking of that's you know great. who you are and what you're doing. And Google is very big on that. So oh, Google yeah. actually will yeah. deliver a lot more marketing and. Uh, so people very rarely have problems with Google not delivering emails if yeah. they're marketing, you know, um, and that's because that's their business model. They're, you know, they don't want to go, you know, stamping on the people, but they're also paying them to do Google ads and to have, you know, and, and they like, and they also have the Gmail as a free service where they scan everything, you know, that you're doing everything. and what you're opening and reading. Yeah. Um, sure, they do, they anonymize it, but they're basically using that as metrics to understand, you know, how well marketing does. So they not only get a good understanding of how their marketing is going and the people, yeah. but also other other you know the competitors as well. Yeah, if if the end user is using Gmail, so yeah. yeah, so Microsoft are usually a lot harder. Their their um, inboxing rates will be lower. So you know, yeah. might get Google at ninety eight to one hundred percent, and then you know yeah. Microsoft might be seventy or eighty yeah. percent, depending on you know. Um, what you're sending and whether your business consumer yeah. or that. Um, Yahoo have had some issues lately with Keep and, and you know, where they've decided to go, no, we're going to block you because you've done some bad things and they've gone about it in a pretty harsh way, which has caused a bit of a storm. Um, and so we've had to help customers through that. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's just one of those things that um, 
yeah, I mean, you have to manage it. You have to understand it as a business owner doing business online these days. So, yeah. um, you know, and, yeah. and reach in the inbox and, and reach for me stands for um, reputation, mm-hmm. engagement, yeah. authentication, content, and hygiene or health of, of oh, your yeah. list. Fantastic. Well, let's run through that because I like these acronyms. Yeah. And just acronyms. explain because because I want to give you know the people who are listening to this some tips that they can kind of take away from this 100%. information yep. that they can kind of apply to their business right yep. now so they can get some value out of what we're chatting about because it's like it's great to understand the whole big picture, but it's mm-hmm. like, okay, well, how can we how can we use it? It's like, I know it's important for me from my business point of view to make sure the emails are getting there and there's a lot of stuff that we've worked together to get that happening. But it's like, what what's some of the takeaways? And I think working through this acronym can sort of help, um, help you know, the people that are listening to this sort of get an idea of what they can do. I'll shut up and you can talk. No, that's all right. That's all right. I was just thinking acronyms are a hard word for somebody with dyslexia. It's like one of those <laughs> words that can easily trip you up, ironically. But, um, so, uh, so yeah, so reach... So, so reputation, that's just about, you know, are you a, is your domain and the IP you're sending from, are they known to be good or bad? Yeah. Um, and everybody usually starts off with neutral as a reputation yeah. thing. So if you start a new domain, you buy a new domain, you start sending emails, you'll be neutral, and then you have to work your way up to being a, a good sender. Um, and, and that takes time, but it's yeah. very quick to um, drop to the bottom and then it can be slow building that back up again. So if you yeah. do some bad practices against your domain name, then you know if you're spammy, then that's going to make it hard for you to get reach the inbox. So um, yeah. engagement is probably the biggest one and the easiest one to understand, but also to do something about, um, but it's getting harder. You know, it's one of those things. Apple yeah. over introducing some things, like I said, the yeah. make engagement hard to track, but you, you need to be as a business owner, probably two really good takeaways would be any new opt-ins who um, who opt in and then don't engage at all. So they don't open or click on yeah. any emails um, yeah. for say seven to 14 days at the most. Yeah. You stop sending to them yeah. because they're either somebody else, you know, it's not a real, it's a bot that's entered that email address and that's going to somebody who didn't actually opt in. They're not really interested. They might've just opted in and then forgotten about you. Even if they're gone on holiday and they were interested, they'll come back 30, 20 days later. Well, the holidays are a bit of a stretch at the moment with COVID, but in Europe and US, they're traveling on holidays. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they might come back in 20 days and they send the email and go, well, you're all these emails from you. And they're like, oh, who the hell is that? I don't remember that. And then they're going to mark you as spam and that's, yeah. that's your reputation, yeah. right? So if they don't if they don't engage at all and they're brand new, you know, cut that off within, say, 14 days. Um, if they're not brand new, if um, they've been on your list for a while and they've engaged sometimes and they're not yeah. others, that then yeah. you, you, you can stretch that out to, say, 60 to 90 days. Yeah, I think um, but about Microsoft, three months. Yeah, yeah, Microsoft months. Um, is closer to 30 days, even less. Wow. Sometimes so engaged in 30 days. Um, so yeah. engagement's super important. Um, so, so they go, so this kind of, you, you kind of go, to, yeah, and that's really important. So we've got campaigns at the moment, you've configured them up for us to basically knock them out of the email sequences or mark them as um, unengaged, unmarketable. Yep. Um, within the first 14 days of that open or um, or click on. If they're brand new, yeah. yeah. If they're brand new. And on the other other side, it's like, oh, well, I, I can't remember exactly what it is. So I think it may be 90 days. If they haven't you know done anything for 90 days, then we drop them off the list as well. We basically mark them as unengaged, uh, unmarketable. And then all of our campaigns will basically, if they're in any email, email campaigns, they'll get dropped out of them. And then if they get added into any ones, they actually get filtered straight out of those before. So we don't actually send them any emails. So. Mm. So, um, so all of our campaigns has a has a gate at the at the at the front of it to basically drop them out if they're unmarketable, and then or to pull them out of that campaign if they're not engaging. So, yep. and that's that's what we've found to be very helpful. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, yeah. so, so that's that's engagement, and also you can do a lot around engagement. Like we've worked a lot on getting that engagement sorted out around making sure that the content in the emails is interesting and like. Like, you know, we send out emails that have interesting content so they can click on links and those sort of things to help boost that engagement. We've got a little lead magnets that we continue to send back into the list to get them to re-engage with the list. Yeah, exactly. Yep. You know, so, yep. so that we get, so that they're, you know, they're getting some stuff for free. They click on a link, they get a, you know, another lead magnet or they click on a link to get some information that's on one of our articles on our website and those sort of things. So that's we're getting right. that engagement and that list as they're going through it rather than a list all being about, hey, I'm really cool, you should buy yeah, all my buy stuff. Buy this, yeah, yeah. No, and, and, that, and that's the thing that um, that I find with my clients that are 
that are that are genuine and authentic and are providing interesting content and useful content for their leads and customers. Yeah. And they do that um, with a, a, a basically a genuine sort of heart, heart you know, they, yeah. they're like, hey, this is going to be useful for you. Sure. They know that in the end that if they keep this person interested that, you know, we're, we're running businesses here. Yeah. The idea here is to um, convert them and, and hopefully, you know, have a lifetime value for that customer. But, yeah. but at the end of the day, you've got to give to, you know, it's, it's, it's not a one-way street. Yeah. So if you're yeah. just doing, you know, here's a promotion, here's a sale, here's my catalog, you know, it's like, it just doesn't work anymore. You know, yeah. that's the real old school way. Um, even yeah. even if you've got a massive list and you can just slam it away and, you know, hammer it for yeah, here to there, you're just going to hurt your reputation and you just won't be reaching the people that you think you are. Yeah. Um, I get people that ask me like, oh, but, you know, can we just hang them on for, say, six months and that? And I say, yeah, sure you can. But then what, what's happening to the other end of the equation? Sure, you're hanging on to these people for longer, but maybe that yeah. means you're not reaching new people. You're not yeah. you're not actually getting in touch with the people that are interested and engaged with your um, Absolutely. message. Yeah. Uh, and you're and just, that's really you're important. Just hurting yourself. Um, and that's... That, so. Yeah, and that's really important for us. It's like, you know, people are a little bit afraid of pulling people off their list. And I'm like, and I'm like, you know, like, yeah, like, you know, I want to see that number as big as possible on my list, but it's actually not about that. It's about the engagement. And we, we're pretty, pretty ruthless with our list yep. um, around that because, look, the reality is somebody hasn't clicked on your email for the last 90 days, probably not interested. Yeah. And it's no yeah. sense in sending them, you know, no matter how many more emails you send them, they're not going to click on them. And look, it may be because they're just not reading emails or they're not interested or or the email box is full or email is not a great way to reach them. So it's like no sense in sending them anymore. You're exactly. just going to piss them off and ruin yep. your reputation in, in the process. 100%. So it's like just, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm, I was going to say piss them off your list, but it's that, that's not a bad, that's not a good thing to say. But you're, you already said it, so that's all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're going to piss them off, piss them off. Yeah, so I you think know, you're just going to confuse our international audience and they're like, what's all this pissing for? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, so. I, I, but, I remember telling an American friend, it's pissing down here, and, he, and she was like, you're doing what? And I'm what? like, no, that's just a colloquial <laughs> term for it's, it's raining, raining really hard. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah. So, excuse yeah. our, um, yeah. yeah, we're a little bit different in the way we speak here. So, <laughs> a little bit different, but anyway. <laughs> so um so that's uh so where are we up to that's the first two isn't it yeah well look yeah, I, and, yeah. and 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 what's the next I don't, on the I don't necessarily list. need to like dive into every single one but i mean yeah. something else i want to just mention on the engagement front there is that i get clients that will say um oh but our business model isn't doesn't work that way and it's you know that's that's a problem because we need these long tails and i'm like yeah i understand that and and yeah. your business model is valid and that might be something that you know, in the past, it's been okay to do, but unfortunately, we're, we're at the mercy of the email service providers. You know, yeah. people are people don't tend to run their own email servers very often anymore, and if they even if they do, they they rely on outside um, email filtering services. Yeah. Um, so they're going to be filtering on these sort of things anyway. But the majority of people and the majority of lists are going to be going to the the big email service providers, ESPs, or the large ISPs, yeah. um, and, and with very few exceptions in between. You know, so. Uh, you have to play by their rules. And if that means that you have to look at other ways of getting them to engage or um, you have to look at other channels or re-engagement campaigns through social media, those sort of things, just to get them to opt back in or do something, um, then, you know, that is just something you have to explore. Even if you also have to think about the fact that if you're using a bulk email sender like Keep or, or MailChimp or, or Active Campaign or anything like that, that um, for your particular business model, you might need to actually run your own email server, and, and and or 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 a service on something like Spark, uh, you know, uh, Spark Post or or um, Amazon SES or Mailgun or something like that, and you and you send uh, your mail through them in a controlled fashion and manage it in a way where you know you've got a better chance of getting delivery because you don't have this big broad base of marketing people on the same email service you're sending from. So. Yeah. But it can get very complicated. And that's why, you know, I, I get pretty busy <laughs> these days with helping people with this sort of stuff. Yeah, um, but it's, yeah, it's it's just one of those things you have to be really aware of as a business owner these days doing business online. So um, the third one, you wanted to jump yeah. to the next one. So yeah. that um, reach, REA, so um, authentication. Ah, that's and this is big one I do. Yeah. Yep. DKIM, is it? Yeah, DKIM, SPF, D, D Mark, you know, all those, yes. all those, um, they're not they're not acronyms, they're more um, what do they call those? There's another term for those, but anyway, they're a type of abbreviation. Yeah. Um uh so they email authentication is basically around 
saying, hey, yes, this email coming from this particular IP address is definitely from us. Yeah. You know, so if I send an email from mappy.com and it goes out on this IP address, which will be a Microsoft or it could be a key IP address or, or yep. it could be, you know, yep. whatever. Um, I have these uh, record or there are records that can be set up to say, hey, yep, this IP address, that's definitely a map, one that Mappy uses. Yep. Cool. That's that's yep. usually what SPF is. Although keep and uh, places like that handle their own bounces and things. So SPF, you're never going to be. 100% aligned on that, but that's okay. That's a more complicated yeah. story. Um, DKIM, that's probably the most important one. That's your authentication yeah. of the, the sender, the domain name. So you were basically saying, hey, if you receive this email from, you know, Keep. Um, from Keep or from uh, Microsoft or from Google or from Active Campaign or whatever, um, or from what was one you're doing, you know, this, this up, viral, up viral, up viral this, stuff, yeah. Yep, yep. That you're doing that um, yep. requires authentication, then that's basically saying, yep, this is, we are confirmed that the owner of that domain has said that, yes, emails coming from that service Server, yep. are legit from us, right? Yep. So, um, and then the third layer to that is DMARC. And DMARC gives you, um, it gives you some extra tools around um, monitoring that and seeing how your authentication is going, but it also lets you control more finely um, what you want the, the receiving email server to do when, um, when your authentication is or isn't right. Yeah. So you can set up DMARC in such a way that if it's not 100% right and it's not authenticated, then you're going to ask them to say, just reject those emails. Yeah. They still might deliver it. They still might have their own policies. Yeah. DMARC's not a, you know, they have to follow DMARC, but it's pretty much accepted these days that if you've got a quarantine or a reject policy, then that's what's going to happen if if the rules match. So. Um, it's it's one of those funda uh, email authentication is one of those fundamental things. It's mandatory. I think it's a yeah, mandatory. It's mandatory. It's mandatory. Um, if you're sending out emails and you don't have it set up, yep. All the email service you know, like, providers will 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 treat your emails with a lower grade and and yeah. less likely to reach the inbox if you don't have email authentication set up in one form or another. Yeah. And if and these days, if you don't have DMARC, DMARC used to not be such a big deal, but in the last couple of years, it's become very important. Um, and they're going to look at that sideways if you don't have a DMARC record. Um, and, and, it, and it's useful as well because you can see whether people are trying to spoof your... I, I get occasional bursts of people trying to spoof mepi.com. So, you know, I don't send a huge volume of email, but then I'll see these huge spikes of thousands of emails and they're all coming from Russia and China and, yeah. you know, and, places in the US and stuff. And, but they're all getting rejected and, and quarantined because I've got a market yeah. place that can, yeah. you know, stop yeah. that from happening. Yeah. So what, if you what, don't, then, you know, you, you're letting the Wild West, <laughs> people yeah. can spoof your domain and, you know, yeah. use your domain. So, yeah. So what happens, uh, look, I'll, I'll kind of explain it my <laughs> way of, of how that works is that basically you've got a, you've got a domain name and an IP address associated with your email and people can basically piggyback onto that and pretend to be that and spoof. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, sort of. Well, they can send from their own IP address and say it's from your domain name when it's not, yeah. when it's coming from a different one and say, yeah, but hey, we're, we're actually mepi.com when it's really, you know, mrrobber.ru, yeah. you know, or, <laughs> yeah, or I'm a crook or... dot, you know, cn or, you know. No, so, not, 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 you know, singling out any countries in any particular. Well, but... no, well, I am because well, Russia and China <laughs> are China the probably... biggest, um, biggest sources, although America's up there as well. So it's, yeah. it is a little bit yeah. unfair, but yeah, generally from the Eastern Bloc. Um, yeah. countries in Eastern um, Asia, then yeah. yeah, unfortunately that is where a lot of that stuff yeah. comes from. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, yeah. that's, that's just yeah. because that's where they, you know, they focused on outsourcing that stuff. They've got a little, it's a little bit more of the wild west, yeah. ironically it's named. Yeah. Yeah. Wild west. Yeah. From the wild yeah. west. But it's okay. not, not anything on the people that live there. It's just that yeah. that's tends to be what happens. You know, yeah. they're coming okay. from those places. So yeah. So authentications critically for me, it's mandatory. It's like, and when we're setting up clients, it's like Mark, can you set up DKIM and or DKIM and all the rest of the stuff? Yep, it's like yep, SPS yep. and just get it sorted out. So yep. I just flick those people to you because you do it really well and it's critically important. Uh, if they are sending out email and they haven't got it set up, it's like, well, I mean, it just needs to be done. So yeah, exactly. And and it's just one of those fundamental things. You know, it's not gonna it's not gonna be um, groundbreaking for you if you set no. it up. It's not gonna you know make this huge sudden everything suddenly gonna get delivered. But it yeah. but it but it will make a, an overall difference. It's like each of these things is like a piece of a puzzle. You know, if you don't have every single piece, yeah. then you're not gonna um, get a, you maximize your deliverability. Absolutely. And you're never gonna get a hundred percent deliverability. That's something you always need yeah. to be aware of. Is yeah, that of and this is usually a factor for people that are sending small amounts of email. 
email because they'll notice individually oh they're looking at you know oh this email to this particular person didn't get through and it's like you know you've got to look at the aggregate and are you getting you know as maximizing your your reach as much as possible so okay. and because you know things like typos happen and bots yeah. and you know all sorts of things or someone's server was down that day you know there can be lots of reasons why mail doesn't get through so yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's why it's important to keep on engaging with your client. You know, don't rely on just one email, one email campaign. It's just very important to continue yeah. to build that relationship. Um, yeah. So anyway, so we've gotten up to, I think, is that three or four? That was three. Okay. And then there's yeah. another two. Yep. So number four is, is C for content. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and we've kind of touched yep. on that a little bit. It's like, just provide good content. Yeah. yeah. So, so yes and no. So, so, I mean, there's, there's, um, so there's there's two aspects to the content thing. So there's an aspect of you want to be interesting to the so there's a user factors, right? Okay. There's a human yeah. factors yeah. aspect. So you want to um, have something that's not clickbaity. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to have a, an engaging, you know, subject line that makes people go, oh, I want to open that, or I'm yeah. interested in that, or that's something that's important to me, or that's relevant, or I understand what that is, and that's yeah. something that you know, whatever it might be. And then the the, the copy inside needs to to speak the right language for that person and language as in, you know, in the way that they understand and yeah. are interested in. So, um, you know, depending on what market you're in and what, who your customer is. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it has to, and it, it has to be done in a way that's just authentic and, you know, yeah. not spammy yeah. and salesy, but, but there's also the, the copy from the sense of mail filtering. So there's yeah. a lot of mail filtering that happens around copy. Yeah. You, know, you get these things that will tell you this was 98% okay on the spam filter you know before you send an email or something like yeah, that you know yeah. it was it was checked to see yeah. how spammy it was whether you're using yeah. you know you're not trying to sell free viagra to you know for <laughs> you know and win a million dollars for you know um you know click yeah. here sort of thing so yeah so i use a i use a product called mail-tester.com yeah so all that is is basically it'll uh, when I in, um, in Infusionsoft and I've got an email I think oh, it might be a bit dodgy I'll just check to see if it's going to trigger any spam yep. you know language or yep. triggers and I'll just basically I'll send I'll click on that it'll give me a link to send the email to I'll send the email to that link it hits their mail server and then they just do a check and it's interesting because you know DK DKIM and SPS and all of that are like mm. really important part of that you know, was it authenticated and make sure that it's not failing those tests. Yep. And then and then it goes in and just checks for keywords and, yep. you know, make sure your images aren't too big or all that sort of stuff. So it's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. No. And so, and so there's not, and, and it's a little bit of a dark art in the sense of we don't know um, what the, the black boxes are inside the black so boxes that the mail services and that email filtering yeah. companies are using. Right. Yeah. So that they don't want, they don't, it's a, it's an it's an arms race basically. Yeah, so the spammers yeah. are always trying to find ways to work around. That's why you get these emails that where the things are misspelled, or there's a dot in the middle of a word, or there's yeah. you know words are just kind of broken up funny, or the you know they're just odd. There might be odd characters and things, and you just you you look at it and you know it's a spam fishy email yeah. or whatever. But yeah. there are people that get fooled by it, yeah. and the idea is they're just trying to hit enough people and reach their inbox. So there's this arms race between beating the the filters. Yeah. and 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 you know stopping those emails getting through so yeah. the trick is is to make sure you don't trigger them unnecessarily right so we we know the basics and we know the things that work and don't work from statistics and and experience um you know how how big your images are how many images you've got in the email um uh, how many links are in the email whether the links are going to any dodgy websites so a lot of people like having way too many links you know they're, they're trying to they're trying to market their business but they have all these links to all these different things and the people are looking yeah. at this and, and there's a single paradox of choice, right? And so they look at this big long list and they're like, oh, what am I supposed to click on? This is just a big mess, right? <laughs> That's right. You know, like, one email, instead one message. Sending them, instead of sending them maybe slightly more frequently and, yeah. and being very targeted and maybe even looking at how people respond to your emails and your content and then, and then changing what you send that specific person, putting them down a different path, segmenting them. Um, so that they receive content that's much more interesting to them. So you, you only, you know, you don't have to throw, you know, mud at the wall um, to try and see what's going to stick. You know, you can actually go, okay, this is what they're interested in. Here's what I'm going to, you know, promote to you. And then you can do side promotions and things, of course, to that later. But um, I think that's that that can be very important because an email with a lot, email with a lot of links, a lot of big images all over the place, just doesn't, um, yeah. doesn't actually, you know 
doesn't help the person. Um, yeah. It doesn't help promote your business that well, generally. There are some exceptions, you know, in the e-commerce world where people expect to get like a, a big flyer with all the latest promotions and lots of pretty pictures of latest products, you know, like, you know, Amazon might send or cash. But although you notice the Amazon still quite often, they'll send a very targeted thing with a yeah. specific product or here is a couple of products or here's this product range um, that, you know, they've moved well away from sending you a big long list of, list of you know, what's stuff. our latest specials, yeah. but there are some exceptions and that, and that's the thing why that's a bit of a dark art because, you know, we have, we have these rules, but they're not hard and fast. They're just, this is best practices. This is probably what we know will work, but you might have to experiment for your own business to see what is better for your customer base. And at the end of the day, if your customers are engaged with your content and click and do things, then that's going to be a good indication. But if you don't get through that filter in the first place to get that engagement, then you know you're just not not going to get anywhere. So yeah. so you're making and even sending things like lots of everyone loves having their social media links in the yeah. bottom of the emails. Yeah. It's like, right. well, yeah, you already yes. know who they are. Why are you trying yeah. to send them off to somebody else's platform? Because you don't own Facebook, you don't own yeah. YouTube. Um, so so send them to your you know, to your property, send them to yeah. your website. Yeah. Um, sure, if you're a Facebook marketer and that's primarily where you're sending people, this is slightly different. Yeah. But, yeah. The, but as yeah. I'm saying, yeah. on the majority, you just don't want to be doing that. And and yeah. sometimes emails will get flagged for content based on the fact they've got a Facebook link in it. So, yeah. you know, that, yeah. that's because Facebook sometimes doesn't rank great for some filters and things. So yeah. Um, yeah. It's, better to, it's better to have something where you can control, you know, that, yeah. that content. Absolutely. I mean, look, James Ramco is always going on about owning the race course, you know? Yep. Yep. And, and it's just and it's and it's a model that we use as well it's like facebook is kind of like you don't have any control over it and the idea for us is to get as many people as possible that are interested that we think are interested or facebook thinks are interested in our products and services off facebook onto our email list so we can market to them under our own you know so that's an asset that we own and that's yep. an asset that we control um and if facebook goes down tomorrow we'll still get our email database you know yep. so um so we can continue running our business. I mean, if my ad account gets blocked for whatever reason, that could happen. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm still in business the day after. Yeah, exactly. Because I because I could basically run up 10 promotions and make stack loads of money. Yep. Um, you know, even without Facebook. But and it's amazing how you can dive into the like, you know, you think, oh, I'm emailing my database a few offers and stuff, and some of them don't stick. And then but it's amazing how you, how I've been able to generate a staff load more money out of the email list by offering different types of offers because some of the demographics in our list, you know, are tuned to different types of offers. So, yeah. you know, it's um, it's fascinating. You know, you think, oh, there's not much left in this list to market, and then you come up with a few new products and services. And in fact, usually when we come up with a new product or service and we promote it for the first time, we make the most amount of money on that first promotion. Sure. Yep. Yep. Because it's you know because our list is. Yeah, it's yeah. new and Something new and different. Yeah, yeah, different absolutely. Good. Yeah, yeah. so you know. Anyway, um, so the last one, yeah, was hygiene, and I think we talked about that a little bit in the earlier conversation about making sure that you know you pull people off the list um, if they're not. Yeah, managing. yeah. So, so there's there's two there's two aspects again to that. So there's um, there's making sure that when people are opting in, that yep. they're genuine, that they're not some dodgy bot, that that it's you know not. That it's a real email. They haven't done a typo. So controlling your opt-ins, um, you know, it's it's becoming more and more important to make sure that people are typing in the right email address and it's actually a real email address before it even gets on your list. Um, because you know, if they type gmail.com instead of yeah. Gmail, yeah. Um, gmail.com or, or or some of those different variations that are typos yeah. are actually used a lot by what's called spam traps. Mm -hmm. So that can hurt your reputation just by ending up, you know, sending to them, especially if you don't pull them off the list if they don't engage, right? Yeah. Um, and that's where, you know, so getting into your list is important, controlling that. But then um, maybe, you know, once every six months, once a year, cleaning your list just to make sure none of them have turned into spam traps or, you you know, you've got some dodgy emails on there. But, but if you're controlling that input and you're managing engagement, then, yeah, your hygiene is generally going to be okay. Yeah. Um, but most people aren't doing those two things well. So they have to run like a, a list cleaning service um, to try and get rid of any dodgy emails. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, so, no, I, I and sometimes an email emails. can go stale in the time yeah. that you've got it on there. You know, someone abandons their, their Gmail account yeah. and Gmail goes, okay, we're going to turn that in a month. We're going to turn that into a spam trap. Mm -hmm. So if you keep sending them and you don't do anything about removing them because they're not engaging, then they're going to go, well, you're a dodgy sender. So your domain reputation starts like, Ooh. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I know we, we were kind of caught up in that a couple of years ago. I know we did a lot of work on that spam trap stuff because we were getting pinged by 
uh, well, at the time they were Infusionsoft. Now they keep. I keep. <laughs> they were getting emails from you know Infusionsoft at the time saying that hey, you know this is this is um, you've got you've got some dodgy stuff, some dodgy email lists yes. or dodgy emails on your list. I'm just going to wind that line down. So that was hygiene, um, and that's pretty much it. So Mark, tell me. Uh, what can people do? I mean, you know, if people are interested in this sort of stuff and they want to get their email sorted out and they want to improve their deliverability, you're the go-to man for getting this sorted out, right? Who, me? No, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> you can talk to me. It's all just gobbledygook to me. <laughs> now, go to these guys, MonkeyPod. No, no yeah. MonkeyPod's one of my mates and clients. Um, I'm just a big fan. So, um, yeah, so like, uh, uh, so email authentication. I can get that set up. We did that as a flat fee thing and we get just get set up right. I've got a background in technology and I was doing DNS and all that sort of stuff before. Um, Microsoft Exchange Server. Yeah. Well, more like, you know, Windows yeah. and internet yeah. connections and, and you know, infrastructure. Um, so I ran an IT business for a while. So, you know, that's my background. I'm quite often the person yeah. that saves people um, from their stuffed up DNS and, and domain infrastructure issues. Um, and web hosting issues, although I try to avoid web hosting as much as possible. But um, it, so, yeah, so that's one of those things because you, you want to be careful who you give access to your DNS, who you let make those changes because they can stuff up your email, they can stuff up your website, they can stuff yeah. up everything. Um, everything. So, everything so, that's on the internet for you. Yeah. So, we know what we're doing in that regard. I'm, yeah. you know, I've got, got all the right experience. Um, and and, and, whenever I have any problems or, or I need help with DNS and stuff, I don't really understand it that much. I kind of got a vague thing, but it's like, oh, Mark, you just put it out. I was yeah. like, I'll yeah. just. And, and look, it's the, and, and, and not to, you know, not to sort of say that, you know, other people can't look after their own stuff if they understand it, but yeah. there is a lot to it that you can get wrong, especially with DMARC and yeah. understanding, you know, yeah. ins and outs of that, um, that it's just better to have somebody who re just really knows what they're doing and, you know, yeah. well, stuff I, up. Look, I don't, I, I, you know, my DNS stuff, um, yeah, I, I don't try to touch it at all. You know, you're the guy that does it for yeah. me because it's, and for our clients, because yeah, I mean, so much can go wrong if you if you misspell something or get a character wrong, or you know, you can just yeah, yeah, or you that. just set the wrong rule and you haven't got something quite right. Yeah. Um, so that that's that's one of the main stages yeah. of things we do for clients, but also yeah. um, we I can help with you know just general you know working through that reach model and and making sure that you've got things like your engagement right and you know you, let's have a look at your reputation you know let's let's make sure that the content and you know hygiene your list is good um I, I mostly work and keep um I, but i can you know i can help customers that are using yeah. the active campaign and i have and yeah. um, various other platforms it's just those aren't you know those aren't something that i work in every day but yeah. um the fundamentals are the same across all the different platforms so it's not yeah. Yeah. it's not necessarily something that you know only help and i've helped your some of your clients with you know active campaign clients etc yeah. so i've got clients yeah. that are on different platforms um so you know that's that's something if you've if you're a if you've got you know a million people on your list and you're a um an affiliate marketer and you've got all these problems with you know you know getting smacked down and you've got all these fake domains and things then don't come talking to me because you know i can send you to someone that can help you 100 percent. you know so yeah. there's someone that can definitely help you with that in the us that i've that i work with but yeah. that's not something i help with but if you've got a you know a, a solid business and you that's want or, or yeah. you're starting a business yeah. and you just want to know how to get these things right or you're having some deliverability issues and you think you know maybe you think it's your yep. provider maybe you think yep. it's um something you're doing then yeah i can help you with that yeah and you know and you've got some fantastic reporting tools that you've got access to in the back end that you can um set up and monitor and view and yep. make sure things are tracking along okay which is yep. awesome and that's and we're looking at our you know email health hygiene i mean mine's pretty good but every time you go into account you know, you actually, you use my account as a case study, don't you? When yeah, you're yeah, 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 because you're so good. Yeah, so I partnered with a guy in the UK who built um, this platform called Deliverability Dashboard, and and basically it, it just has a look at how your engagement's doing for yeah. your um, for your list. Um, it, it just grabs all that information off your um, system, whether it's Active Campaign or Mailchimp or or, or um, Keep or whatever, um, and it just gives you a report of how are you doing, you know, from an engagement perspective. And it can give you a really good sign as to how healthy, you know, your um, sending practices are and your and your um, deliverability practices are. It's not everything, but it definitely yeah, yeah. gives you a good oh, yeah. um, understanding. But, but, I mean, the whole yeah. intent of it is to really 
uh, open up your uh, give clarity on the areas where you can get some really good improvement yes 100 percent. yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, really quick you... really quick improvement and yeah. and see the results you know in a good amount of time so yeah, yeah. um you're, you're a hard one to help because you're you're already doing pretty much the maximum on everything so you know we're, we're tweaking at the two percent level for you yeah. But yeah. yeah if um it can be very easy to see you know oh look you've got a problem with sending to google or you, that's unusual you know well what's yeah. that you know we we can look at the, the tool will break that down based on you know yeah. the different um, email providers and things that's really just gives you some extra detail um that you just wouldn't normally have with your yeah. you know, with your bulk sending or crm provider fantastic excellent yeah awesome awesome all right well thanks mark for that this has been hugely okay. insightful beautiful yeah, and no, I could talk about this for hours. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not the most exciting topic in the world, email delivery, but you know, every business who runs online and is using email, and especially yeah. COVID times, yeah, it's become super important to get that yeah. right, and, and it's getting harder to get right. So yeah. Yeah. you know, um, yeah, having an easy. edge over your competition and making yeah. sure that you're not wasting your time and money mm. um, is you know, it's, yeah. it's super useful for your business. So yeah, cool, cool, cool. All right. Okay.